Hi and welcome to War HQ. My name is Lucius and on today's episode what we'll be covering is a competitive roster build for the Harlequins. Now the Harlequins, they weren't the first team that I played with in Kill Team, but what they were is the first team that I purchased for Kill Team. I remember uh, when Kill Team first came out before I really got into it, I was looking to get back into some Games Workshop stuff. So what I did is I went into GW and I purchased a box of Harlequin troops. Now I painted those up and I'll show you pictures of those in a second. Um, and although Tau were my first love with Kill Team and that's what I started with and um, went on to play the National Championship and set with, um, it was Harlequins that I first painted um, as far as my reiteration back into, into Kill Team 40k kind of thing. So they've always been my favourite of the Elves, uh, or the Eld Eldari, I guess they are now. Um, so I've got a bit of a different list here for you guys today. It's something I've been mulling on for a while, and I'm starting to think that I might be pulling out my Harlequin list again. I think it's not bad. It's, it's really not bad. Like, I sort of gave up on them a while back because they were so hit and miss. Like, you either you won big or you lost drastically. You know, like you just got wiped out within, you know, one or two turns uh, just from bad you know, invulnerability saves. Uh, and that's really what this team is in essence. It's, you know, hit or miss. Uh, but when it, when it does succeed, it succeeds amazingly. But I, th I think I've got come across a list that I think will make it a little bit more competitive. Um, you tell me, you be the judge. Um, I'm not saying this is the best list in the world, but um, this is just something I've been thinking about for a while. I, th I think it can be competitive. I'm going to play a lot more games with it uh, when I can, obviously. Um, but for now, if you'd like to consider becoming a subscriber to our channel, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, thanks to all those people that have already. Um, we really, really appreciate um, your support. And please like, comment, all those things. And for now, let's get started. I'm going to start by just going through the mask form that I chose and why I chose it. Now, I've chosen the Soaring Spite Serpent's Brood. Now, Harlequins himself have some really amazing mask forms, like... In the core book, Harlequins were very strong, and then elites come out, and they didn't get anything that, like besides sub factions. So, the mask forms themselves do make up for it a bit. They are really good and very competitive. Like there's probably about three that I would use in a competitive sense, but the Soaring Spite is the one that I've chosen, and um, it reads as follows: So, models in your kill team treat all pistol weapons that they are equipped with as an assault one weapon during a battle round in which they advanced. In addition. These models do not suffer the penalty to their hit rolls for shooting assault weapons during a battle round in which they advanced. So you can see straight away that this is really, really strong. Every single Harlequin model is armed with a pistol. You've noticed I'm taking a shooting specific um, sub faction, and I'll explain those reasons now. I think what the problem with Harlequins is generally is the lack of shooting, the lack of any range shooting. Um, that turn one trying to get into combat, I know they get bonuses uh, to charging, but this is going to give you an ability with your whole team to advance and be able to shoot. And I think in that turn one, it's going to make you a lot more competitive. Like in a 100-point list, you're going to have you know between seven and eight models. And in a 125-point list, you're going to have you know nine to ten models. So that's going to give you... You're going to be able to get all of those into cover. I suggest cover. Um, and get them right up into the enemy's face and be able to take 10 shots. Now, if you're going to combine some of the good shooting weapons, which you're going to see here, I'm going to have a few of my Harlequins are going to be sort of subbed in as gunners, but they, still, they can still fight really well too. So this team, I think uh, I've used it a bit. Uh, I've been doing a bit of experimenting with it. It's, it's quite strong. Is it the best Harlequin list? I don't know, but it definitely works and it's definitely something you should consider. Now, Soaring Spite really goes in well with a lot of the tactics options that the Harlequins have, and they do have some really strong ones. My favourite being the Ghosts of the Webway. Now, this is a two-point or two-command point uh, tactic and enables you to drop in three of your Harlequins from reserve and place them anywhere on the board up to five inches from the enemy. Now, a lot of other factions have a similar tactic to this, but they can only do it at eight inches. So five inches really puts you in range for your main weapon in this list, and that is going to be the fusion pistol. Now, three fusion pistols are nasty. Now, they have a strength 8, minus 4 AP, D6 to their um, damage. And if you're within half range, then they, you can roll 2D6 and choose the highest for your damage as well. So you're pretty much going to be wounding 
on a 2 plus, you're hitting on a 3 plus generally, and you are doing d6 damage. Nothing is probably going to get a save against this, like Marines won't get a save against this, so they'd have to have really good armor to get a save against this. So dropping these three fusion pistols in turn one, after all movement's been resolved, you can put them in anywhere you want, near all their primary targets, and, you know, you've got a pretty good chance of hitting, hey? Like, even if they're behind cover, you you literally still have a 50-50 chance of hitting them. So if you can position yourself well enough that you can get, you know, around their cover, then you're be hitting on a 3+, plus, wounding on a 2+, plus most of the time, no armor save, D6 damage. It equals death in just about every scenario you look at. So... That is sort of what I'm aiming for with this, with one of the lists, and you know that that kind of thing is very important for this turn one drop, um, being based around a shooting thing. Now, obviously, you didn't advance that turn, but you were just drop there, so you just class as a normal movement, which means you can still shoot your pistols, while the rest of your force can advance forward, and they can shoot and advance um, without penalty as long as they're within range. So that's really cool. And the other guns you'll see that I'll use for the close combat guys are going to be Shuriken pistols and Neuro pistols uh, because they all have a 12-inch range. So keep that in mind as we go forward. Uh, there's Look, there's a couple of other tactics here. They have two, like Fire and Fade and stuff like that, which Elves have, um, so they can shoot, they can move. That's really handy. Um, but yeah, I won't go through all of them, but have a good read through the Kill Team Annual to get some really good ideas. And then I'll, I'll pick up a few of these as we go through. Okay, looking at the roster itself, positions 1, 2, 3, and 4 are taken up by Harlequin players with fusion pistols. Now, one of them is a scout, they are 15 points each. Positions 5 and 6 are taken up by neuro pistol troops players, uh, which are 14 points each, no specialists. Positions 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 are taken up by Harlequin's embrace troops. They are 14 points each and contain a vet, a combat, and a zealot specialist. Positions 12 and 13 are taken up by caress harlequin troops. Uh, these are 15 points each and contain a zealot and a combat specialist. Positions 14, 15, and 16 are taken up by harlequin's kiss troops. These are 16 points each and contain a zealot and a veteran. Positions 17, 18, 19, and 20 are normal harlequin troops and they include a leader and a medic specialist. First thing you're going to notice about this particular roster, uh, compared to some of my other ones, is you have no options really of what type of model you're using. So you only have um, a Harlequin player, um, and that's it. There's no other types of troops you can use. So the base ones are 12, and the most expensive ones, you know, uh, what I'm using anyway, go up to 16. So... You want to, like I've said before to people, what you want to do is you want to fill these rosters up. You don't want to have vacant sp spaces. You never know when you're going to come across someone you're going to need to use one of these weapons against. And it gives you a lot of variety too. You'll see that with the list builds, which I'll go on to now. Now, going on to the Battleforge Kill Team List Build 1. I'm going to call this my Elite Killer List. Um, you guys that know me, I always have an Elite Killer List because uh, I like killing elites. So... The first four positions within this list are taken up by fusion pistols. Now, that costs us 60 points, and one of these is a scout. The next position is taken up by a leader, and he is just armed with normal weapons. So he costs 12 points. And the last two positions are taken up by a Harlequin's Embraces. They cost 28 points. There's a zealot and a combat specialist within them. Now, this gives us a total model count of 7 and a break point of 4, and it costs 100 points. So simply, if we were going to take this to 125 points, you would pick up two extra normal players for 24 points, bringing it to 124 points and having a total model count of 9 and a break of 5. Now, this is the list that I was talking about before when I said you could drop in three of these fusion gunners um, within five of the enemy. So there's four really powerful shots, like wounding on twos, no armor saves, D6 damage. Brutal. And also, the fourth fusion guy that you don't drop in is a scout specialist. So he's able to re-roll of advances, so you should be able to get a really good advance with him as well, so to get those four shots in on the first turn. And the rest are just there. The leader's just there for the command, obviously, and the embraces are there for close combat. 
and to protect your uh, gunner guys, which are good in close combat anyway. There's, there's no problem there, but they can just hit a little bit harder and do a bit more damage. Um, and then at the 125 variant, you're really just gaining those extra two guys, uh, which is more chaff and more you can throw at the enemy in close combat. But just keep in mind too, all of the shuriken pistols on these normal guys um, also have a 12 inch range. And with this um, sub faction, you're still able to advance and shoot with no penalty with a pistol. So that's pretty good. You could pretty much shoot with your entire team in turn one with this force. And really that's what it's designed for. Battleforge kill team list variant number two is what I'm going to call the Horde Killer. Now the Horde Killer list is pretty simple. You have uh, two guys armed with Neuro Pistols. They are 28 points. You have a normal guy who's a leader. Uh, you have five Harlequin Embracers, um, which is a combat, a veteran, and a zealot specialist, plus two normal ones. Now this gives us a total model count of eight, and increases our break point to five and it's 100 points and to add on if you're going to go to 125 you would just add two normal uh, players again for 24 points to bring it to 124 points total and this would give you a 10 model count and a six break which is probably the best in this roster it's about as high as you're going to get really um, now the idea with this one is you're going up against low toughness low ap models. Your Neuro Blasters are really just there to try and get some guaranteed kills upon some of the enemy. Um, they do have a low strength. That's the only thing that lets the Neuro Blaster down, but it does have a 12 inch range. The three strength really lets it down, but it has a minus three AP and D3 damage, which is quite strong. So you want to be targeting things that are, are weaker uh, that you want to take out. Maybe really important models, like say you're playing Imperial Guard, maybe you target their plasma with these guys, you know what I mean? And you try and take them out, you're going to be on a pretty... As, soon, as long as you can wound, um, they're pretty much going to die. So that's what the Neuro Blasters are for in there. Um, you know, you've got... And really this team is built around your Harlequin Embracers, so you've got really good close combat stuff. Now keep in mind that all these guys again are going to have their shuriken pistols um, and they're going to be able to go to town with those uh, in the first round as well with advancing. So just get them in behind cover, get your shots off and these shots are going to be very effective against horde type armies. So like if you're fighting Tyranids, something with strength 3, you're shooting shuriken pistols at them, you're going to do really well. Hey? And just remember with shuriken pistols too, if you roll a 6 then their AP is at minus 3. So these are really good weapons. Um, you're hoping to get, like, if you know if you're in your, you know, for 100 points, you're hoping to get like eight shots off on that turn, or if you know, 125, you're going for 10 shots that turn, and that can be quite powerful with very well aimed shots from these guys. Um, no penalties from their advance, obviously. Uh, you've got a couple of neuro blasters there, and then when you do get into close combat in the second turn, you've got all those Harlequin embraces, which are really powerful. Um, and you know, it's it's the the cheaper option of the close combat weapons, the Harlequin Embrace, but it, it really is powerful. Like it gives you a plus one strength, so it puts you up to four, which you really desperately need. That's what really lets Harlequins down is their low strength. Uh, that's why I don't really recommend uh, taking just the Harlequin Blades most of the time, because they, they are quite crap. Um, but you do get a minus three AP too, so keep that in mind. With the, with your four base attacks and you know these guys, so if it's just a combat result, they're going to have five. Super powerful, man. Like That's a really powerful combination. I think this is a real horde buster. See what you think. Battleforge kill team list variant number three. I'm going to call this our mixed force. So what we have is two fusion pistols. Um, one is a scout. We have two Harlequin's caress, caresses. Um, one is a zealot. One is a combat specialist. We have one Harlequin's embrace. Um, we have one neuro pistol. And we have one normal Harlequin, which is a leader. That gives us a total model count of seven and a four break at 100 points. And we just, again, add the two normal Harlequins on uh, and put that up to 124 points and nine model count and a five break for this team. The idea with this team is you have a little bit of everything. You know what I mean? You've got your two fusions, you've got a neuro, so you can shoot at different targets depending on what you've got. This might be a good one against, like, again, Tyranids because you could use your fusions um, and your caresses and things like that against like the warriors and then aim your embraces and your neuros at the um, uh, at the smaller nids. And I think, yeah, it's a it's another, it, look, it's a pretty tidy little list, that one. I think it could work in a multitude of situations. Battleforge kill team, list variant number four. They call this our close combat elite killer. 
So the idea with this one, we have three times Harlequin Kisses, uh, a Zealot and a Veteran. We have one Fusion Pistol. We have two normal Harlequins, one as a Medic. And we have one normal Harlequin who is a Leader. So this gives us a model count of seven, break of four. We have 99 points on that list. And to buff it up, 225, we've included one Embrace and another Normal this gives us a 9 model count and a 5 break with these guys. So the idea with this one is this is more about, you know, maybe turn 1, you're just really trying to get those shots off. So get your shots off and then you get into close combat. So, you know, you've got 7 to 9 shots in that first round. You've got, a, you've got a, you know, you've got your fusion gun there, but everything else is armed with shuriken pistols. So they can all be effective in their own right. Um, and that having that whole round of shooting makes no one useless as well. Um, it's only the fusion pistol which has a 6 inch range, everything else is going to have 12 with the shuriken pistols. Um, and then when you do get into close combat, those harlequin kisses are going to totally decimate anything that's in front of them with the amount of attacks that they have. They're going to have 5 attacks each uh, for the two specialists, and those harlequin kisses are just nasty. Um, plus 1 strength, minus 1 AP, D3 damage. So that can be used for a multitude of things, and we'll, you know, pretty much not most things, unless heavily armor is heavily armor is one thing they do fail against, um, which is why I do prefer the embraces um, and the caresses, but the D3 damage ensures death most of the time. So, yeah, that is list variant number four. There you have my soaring spite uh, take on a Harlequin roster for competitive kill team. Uh, it is definitely competitive. Um, if you have suggestions below, let me know. There's not really much you could really add. Keep in mind, um, there are only four lists that I've taken out of that roster. Like the, you know, it's got fairly endless potential there. You can experiment and just uh, get it get it together however you want. Um, you know, have a look at some of the other options you might be able to use there. These are just four that you know common ones I'd use. I'd probably say the first two lists that I gave you were the ones that I would use primarily, and. The first list in particular was the one that I designed this around with it in mind. Um, that was what I was sort of mulling in my head. But yeah, the Horde Killer is, is quite good as well. But, you know, you've got options there for close combat as well. I think with the Soaring Spite, it is really important to get that, you know, being able to advance and shoot uh, with those pistols really makes this team good because it means turn one, instead of doing very little, like maybe getting one or two in there with good charge rolls and stuff like that, you're going to have, be effective straight away. You're going to be able to use all turn one to shoot. And look, it's only a four turn game primarily. So that makes your turn one not a write off if it goes badly or awry. So you are going to have to take chances. And as you can see with the Harlequin list, you, you're low on numbers. I mean, at 100 points, you're only looking at, you know, between seven and eight models. You can't really lose a lot, but that's why you've really got to use cover. Uh, but make sure you advance all these guys so that you can get that special assault one rule for all your pistols. And you'll be you'll be laughing, you'll be loving it. Uh, really fun list to play. Um, yeah, Let, uh, th there are a couple of other tactics I should mention that you know could really work with this as well. There's the prismatic blur one. Um, so if you are advancing, you're worried about getting murdered. Uh, so maybe with one of your fusion pistols or something, which is one of your more expensive, or one of your Harlequin kisses, you can put this on at one CP, and that'll make your invulnerability save a three plus, which makes you really hard to kill. Um, definitely <laughs> recommend that. There's ones where you can, you know, you can always have a six for advance rolls, one CP. There's, there's quite a, a lot of good stuff. There's ones where you can attack again in close combat. Keep, keeps going on. They have really good tactics, the Harlequins, just as they have very good sub factions. So um, keep those in mind. Um, I'm trying to revive my my love for Harlequins here. It was my first love, uh, and the thing that got me back into painting 40k and Games Workshop miniatures again. So, yeah, let me know what you think down below. Please subscribe to this channel, as I've said before. I really, really appreciate it and would love to have you here. Um, yeah, but for now, have a good day. My name is Lucius. Uh, this is War HQ. You're you, I'm me, and have a good day.